Okay, so your ratio terms. Ratio tables is a table of a table of pairs of numbers that form equivalent ratios. All tables have an additive and multiplicative property. So what this is saying is you can find the numbers by either multiplying or adding. All right, so ratios can be looked at from a multiplicative or additive nature. So the first one we're going to look at is the additive table. It says the initial value is added to the previous entry in the column to find the value of the next entry. That sounds complicated, but all you're going to do is if you have a 1 to 2 ratio, you're going to add it, those same numbers together and you're going to get a 2 to 4 ratio. And then you're going to add it 1 to 2 to, the, to that number and get a next number. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. All right, Multi multiplicative table. Both initial values are multiplied by the same number to find the next value of the table. Remember how we told you how to find equivalent equivalent ratios? What do we do to find equivalent ratios? When we multiply them. Yes, Dennis. Or okay by what though? Yes, Jacob. The same number. The same number. So that's what a multiplicative table is. If you have 1 to 2, you're going to multiply both sides by 4, right? You make it 2 to 4. And if you multiply them by 3, you're going to get 3 to 6. That's, that's all it is. You're multiplying the first term and the second term by the same number to get the new number. Pretty simple, right? Okay. No. It's already up there, but so this is an additive table. The initial value is added to the previous entry in each column to find the value of the next entry. So here we started off with three to eleven. Okay, so we have three to eleven. We want to find the next number. All we did was we added eleven to eleven. We got twenty-two. We added three to three. We got six. So we got six to twenty-two. You guys should be writing this down, by the way. You copy this table down and write it down. All right, do it on the blank side that you guys were writing your notes. And then to find the next number, you just add 3 to one side, you get 9. Add 11 to the other side, you get 33. And so on down the line. Yes, Seamus? On the blank, on the left side, where you just just draw a small table and write this down. Okay. Above the small table, above the table, they'll put additive table. Additive table. And this is how you would show your work. You could do it this way, or you could do it this way. And then. See how that works? You can do it one of, one of those two ways. Now, all we're telling, well, we, the only thing we require is that you do the first two and show your work. After that, if you can do it in your head, then you can write the rest of the numbers in. So, for you to get credit, you at least have to do the first two numbers showing your work, okay? I would recommend that you keep doing, that you keep showing your work, that way you don't make a mistake. But we only require the first two. That's the additive table. Is there any questions on this? Okay. Multiplicative table. This is the one that you guys are pretty more that you guys are pretty familiar with. All right. Both initial values are multiplied by the same number to find the next value in the table. So we started with two to five. We multiplied both sides by two. 
So you got to keep me writing this table down as well. Every time there's a table up here, unless we tell you otherwise, wherever you can fit it in in your book. So we multiply both sides by 2. We got 4 to 10. We multiplied the original ratio again by 3. That gave us 6 to 15. Remember, we're always going back to the original ratio. And then we multiplied the original ratio by 4. That gave us 8 to 20. Does everybody see how that works? And you can do this as well. that way. Again, we only require you to do the first two numbers. The first two, because this is your original, right? You do these first two, show your work, and you'll get credit. But again, I recommend that you do all of them that way so you don't make a mistake. Any questions? Pretty simple, right? last one right here is the one is the next one that you have to do. Okay, so write this table down. Try to figure out the numbers. We're working on this table right here. John, the left side, of, the left side of the table. What was the what, what was the what was the number that you used? No, the left side, this side. Okay, three. Three. How'd you get that? Okay, that's one way. Does anybody have another way? Yes, Nathan. Number for three, so I did 12 minus 3, then 9 minus 3, then 6 minus 3, and I got the average. Okay, so you, you subtracted. Who was over here that, that figured it out? How'd you get it, Gabriel? So I know the pattern says 12 plus 3 is 15, 15 plus 3 is 9. Okay, so all those answers are correct. Okay, so there's multiple ways to do this. You can look at the three numbers 12, 15, 18. And like Gabriel said, he, he saw the pattern. They all went up by 3. You can take 12, you can take 15 minus 12, that gives you 3. Either way, all those answers are correct. So, John, what did you get for the first number? 3. Well, we're, we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're doing this column first. What's the, what's the next three, number? 4, 6. I'm sorry. 1, 1, 3, 6, 9. Okay. Okay. All right, so the second column, who's got that? That's Caden does. What'd you get for the what'd you get for that first number, Caden, and how'd you get it? This one. On the right hand side. Um, I got seventeen. Okay, she got seventeen. How'd you get it? Uh because I subtracted thirty-four from fifty-one. Okay, so she did 51 minus 34, which gave her 17. So in this first one, what do we put? 17. 17. And it goes 34, 51. Then what's after that? 
68. And what's after 85? 102. 102. I got 1,000. I got 1,248. Oh, you're a little bit off. <laughs> okay. So that's how you get the numbers for that table right there. That is correct. You take 51 minus 34, they give you 17, and then you fill in the rest of them. And all, and all Kane did was the additive. He just added 17 to, to each one, and it came out to 102 was the last one. We're on page 32, guys. Anybody open up page 32 if you're not there yet? Again, we're going to start with our marking of the text. Uh, I can tell you already from checking homework, this still continues to be an issue. Those who are not marking your text tend to be the ones that have the most trouble. The students where I saw that mark the text, almost every one of them got everything right and was showing all their work. So there is a direct correlation here. If you really want to be successful, a lot of it will start with marking your text, okay? So to make paper mache, our teacher mixes water and flour. For every, that's a ratio term, we have two cups of water, she needs to mix in three cups of flour to make the paste. So find equivalent ratios for the ratio relationship, two cups of water to three cups of flour. Represent the equivalent ratios in the table below. So we have a find and we have a represent, two different things that we have to do. So the first one gets right to what we were doing on our quiz today. Who knows what my first entry would be? What is the ratio for water to flour? Loading? Good. Two to three. So that's my initial value. So Noah, do I just write twos and threes for every value? No. What's my next one going to be? Gabriel? Uh, four. And? Uh, How did you get that? I did two times two and three and three. <laughs> Did you do times or plus? Plus, okay. You can do either one. Either one is fine, but be consistent on what you're doing. So to show our work, he said he saw this as additive. Then he's adding two on this side and adding three on this side. Gives me four and six. So again, to show our work, we show that we're adding two, adding three. That's going to get me six and nine. Once you've shown your work twice, then you just finish filling it out so we understand You've got this concept. Gives me 8 and 12 and 10 and 15. Easy enough? Too easy. Who said too easy? John? Wow, math being called too easy. I love this. This is a good concept. Well, even Nathan thinks it's easy. I know we're taking it now. Okay, any questions on how we fill that out? Okay, let's go ahead and turn the page. Okay, now we're going to look at Javier. Javier has a new job designing websites. He is paid at a rate of $700 for every three pages of web content that he builds. Create a ratio table, there is an instruction, to show the total amount of money Javier has earned in ratio to the number of pages he has built. So what is my initial ratio going to be? Where did he start? How many pages? Nathan? Three pages. And how much money did he earn? 700. Is there anyone who does not understand where those two numbers came from? Now, I just want to add a quick side note. Anybody see a problem with this? Logan? Okay. I think I can do that. That wasn't the one I was hoping you guys would see. This is actually one of my issues with Engage New York. Shana? No, that's actually fully, uh, thank you for pointing that out. That's fully acceptable. I can do my tables up and down. Or left or right, either one of those is abs absolutely okay, actually. Nathan? Uh, so, the question that mentions the money first, but usually when you're making page diagrams, uh, the first mention is on the top. Thank you! And I don't know why Engage New York does this to me. 
I'm training you and I want you to maintain 700 should have been first, 3 should have been second. Why they reversed it, I don't know. But for our purposes, we are going to be consistent. Because 700 was listed first, made to mail it, it should have been on top. But we're going to accept the tables that they gave us. Just go from this. Make sense? Everybody see it now? Okay. So, what would my next entry be? You see if I it? If I did 3 and 700, what's going to be next? How did you get that? Okay, so she's looking at this as a multiplicative. And again, the reason I asked her is because it doesn't matter which way you do it. Some of you saw that I added 3 and added 700, that's fine. But she saw multiplicative, so that's what we're going to do. Again, the big key when you look at this as multiplicative is we always come back to this first entry. So now that we're doing multiplicative, I'm going to come from here, I'm going to go times 3. From here, I'm going to go times 3. So what's 3 times 3? 9. What's 700 times 3? Okay. From there, now we can just continue to build our table. So now I go back, I go times 4. That's going to give me 12 and 2,800. Then I'm going to do times 5. That's going to give me 15 and 3,500. Then I'm going to do times 6. That's going to give me 18 and 4,200. Then I'm going to do times 7. 21, 4,900. Uh, 4, then I'm going to do times 8, 24, 5,600. Oh. Okay. Gabriel? Yes, yeah, Danny. Was that the 2,100? 2,100? That's just the 700 times 3. Ryan, you tracking? You have this all built, filled out already? Okay, this is too much. I hope so. I love it when I start hearing that math is becoming easy. That's a good thing. That means you guys have Mr. Vasquez for a teacher because he's making it easy for you. Because if it's me, I know I ain't doing it. That helps. Okay. Hope you guys all have that. Now we're going to get to the next question. Javier is setting up to purchase a used car that costs $4,200. How many web pages will Javier need to build before he can pay for the car? So there's our question. How many web pages will you need to do? Okay, so this is just my point to take a step back. Again, here's the advantage on tables, guys. Is it hard to build that table? No. No. Once I built that easy to build table, I can now ask a whole series of questions that are going to be very easy for you guys to answer. So, for example, how much do I need to build for $4,200? Audrey, how did you get that? You just looked up. Once I built it, those are my two relationships, that relationship, that are put together. So he needs to build 18 pages. It is seriously right there. And again, that's the advantage to building tables. They're not hard to make, you guys have all agreed on that, but it now lays all that information out for me to answer any question that I need to. Really a simple way to do that. Questions? Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay. Next one. Spraying plants with cornmeal juice is a natural way to prevent fungal growth on the plants. It is made by soaking cornmeal water using two cups of cornmeal for every nine gallons of water. Complete the ratio to answer the questions that follow. Okay, so what's... So we have two cups of cornmeal for every, that's our ratio, nine gallons of water. So what's our first two boxes going to be? Shane six. So two cups of cornmeal, right, for nine gallons of water. Who can tell me what the next number in the table is going to be? Anna, Anna Lee. Four. And 18. How did you get that? You did multiplication. 
So what she did was times two. All right, what's the next one? Anybody over here? What's the next number? Gabriel. Uh, six and 27. Next. Logan. And the last one. You already, you've already gone. Let's get Seamus. Okay, so you got all those by doing the multiplication. You could have done it additive as well, whichever one you're more comfortable with. All right, so now that we've built our table, now we got to answer our questions. How many cups of cornmeal should be added to 45 gallons of water? Okay, that's the question. By looking at the table, who can answer that? Many. Ten. So, you better be. This thing is messing up again. What's that? Oh, ten cups of cornmeal. Sorry about that. Yeah. That's my mistake. Yep, you're right. It was 10 cups of cornmeal. There we go. All right, thanks for correcting me. It's the end of the day, mistakes are being made. That's what you guys are here for. All right, so part B, Paul has only eight cups of water. or cornmeal, Paul has only eight cups of cornmeal. How many gallons of water should he add if he wants to make as much cornmeal juice as he can? Oh, up here? Yeah. Okay. Started chewing everybody out. Example, he's Okay, so who do we have? John. Okay, Seamus, what do you got? Okay. There we go. <laughs> so you need 36 gallons of water. All you have to do is just look at the table and it tells you the answer. All right, last part, part C. What can you say about the values of the ratios in the table? Any hint at the math term that we use? Many. Yes, you, you've done that, but what does that what does that tell you about the relationship? Like, what do all these have in common? Table. That's true, but that's not quite the answer. Bam, there it is. They're equivalent. They're all equivalent. Okay. So if you were to divide them all out, they'd go back to the original ratio, right? So they're all equivalent. equivalent. 
All right, any questions? Yeah. Okay, starting on lesson 10. Again, I'm, I'm going to keep hitting this until you guys start get, understanding the importance. Marking your text is really, really important, guys. So we need to make sure we're doing all that we can. Okay, our first one. Now we're doing a fruit salad. For every, that's a math term, we'll box that. Quart of blueberries you add, you would like to add, uh, put in three quarts of strawberries. Create three ratio tables that show the amounts of blueberries and strawberries you would use if you needed to make fruit salad for greater numbers of people. Table one, should it contain accounts where you have added fewer then 10 quarts of blueberries to the salad. Table 2 should contain amounts of blueberries between and including 10 and 50 quarts. Table 3 should contain amounts of blueberries greater than or equal to 100 quarts. Okay? So they've given us the parameters for developing our table. So for table 1, I'm supposed to have fewer than 10. Where do you think we should start? Logan? Okay, if I start at one quart of blueberries, how many quarts of strawberries do I need? Nathan? Three. Where did you get that? From the text. From the text that we mark. Every three. They're right there, guys. If you'll mark your text, it should make it easy. So what's my next entry going to be? What do you think, Ryan? Why did you skip to three? Okay. Probably the safest place. I'm going to go to two. So what number would go with two, Ryan? And then one, I had three quarts of strawberries. So two, I would have. So for one, I have three. So when I make that two, the three would become. That makes sense, doesn't it? Okay. Now, you can go either way. I'm going to go additive on this first part. So on that side, I was adding one. On this side, I'm adding three. That's how I show my work. Does anybody understand how to show your work on the table? Anybody not understand how to show your work? We do it twice to make sure that you do understand the pattern. Once you've done that, then you can just finish filling out your table. So that becomes 4, 5, 12, and 15. Is everybody okay with that? Yes, Logan. I'm sorry? No, because table two gave us different directions. Table two says I have to do between and including 10 and 50 quarts. So you were very specific on that one, right? So where do I need to start table two? 10. And it has to end at 50. Because that's what my directions told me. Again, we must follow directions. Back to day one in class when we gave you that directions test. The importance of reading and understanding all of it. So if I have 10 quarts of blueberries, how many quarts of strawberries do I have, Gabriel? Um, five. I had six when it was just two. Okay. How did you get thirty? Uh, Why did you multiply ten by three? Good. So she's actually looking at a relationship we haven't really covered yet. She said, how did I go from one to here? I multiplied by three. How did I go there? I multiplied by three. So because it's a ratio table, sometimes you will see this, not always. But this is one thing you can do is you look for patterns. So she said 10 and 30. The other way to do it, guys, is look at that multiplicative relationship. Because I started at what? 
1 to 3. How do I go 1 to 10? Times 10. So I have to. So if I did that on one side, I have to do the same thing on the other, right? So now, what would I do for my next entry? Imagine. How did you get that? Okay. So he's looking at a multiplicative. We can also look at multiplicative within the table. So you just say that one was times two. So that one's times two. So I'm doing multiplicative. I go back to that initial value again, but now I'm going to go times three. Go back to that initial value times three gives me a ninety. Then I can do forty, one twenty. 50 and 150. Everybody okay? Yes, Janice. Good. So he's seeing an additional pattern. If I take the initial numbers, now I'm just doing a multiple of 10. So I'm just adding a zero to every single number. Make sense? Now let's look at our last one. Our last instruction said greater than or equal to. 100 quarts of blueberries. So that means my first one has to be at least 100. If that's 100, what's my strawberries going to be? John? Good. Is everybody understanding where those numbers are coming from? Okay. So again, normally with the bigger numbers, we're going to use a multiplicative relationship. It's just easier. So now I'm going to go times 2. That gives me 200. I do that one times 2 gives me 600. I go back to my initial value times 3 gives me 300. My initial value times 3 gives me 900. Then we've got 400, 1200, or 1200, 500, and 1500, or 1500. That's their zeros. I, my board just fritzing out a little bit on me. Questions on how we got any of those numbers? Okay, let's talk. Let's now we're going to go to that next step, which is taking a little more in depth look at them to now analyze all the information we can get out of these tables. So describe any patterns you see in the table. Be specific. We've already talked about a couple of them. That from the first one to the second one, I did times 10. Then I did times 100, so I was just adding two zeros. Uh, Kaden added in that relationship of once I know my blueberries, I multiply by three to get my strawberries. Okay? Uh, Bennett. Now you tell us. Oh, it just ran out? Uh, it went behind you. There's something back. Okay? I'll give you a hint. I'm actually looking for a specific math term. Using a math term, how would you describe all those relationships? Logan? They are equivalent ratios. Thank you. Okay? So they are all equivalent ratios. How are the amounts of blueberries and strawberries related? Um, Kaden already gave us that one. There are always three times as many strawberries. So regardless of what the blueberries number was, I multiply that number by three and I get my number of strawberries. Robert, you get all this written down? Okay. How are the values in the blueberries column related to each other? In other words, as I went down the blueberries column, what was I doing? Dennis? So, one, I add a zero and I get two. So I was adding one. Okay. So they were incremental, right? Because here, did I add one? But what was the key on that? It's that initial value. I just added the initial value, okay? So on blueberries, we added the initial value. Again, 
again, I always underline my answers. That's just an old habit from school. What about, oops, the next one, sorry. How are the values in the strawberries column related to each other? If I look at the strawberries, what do I see? Okay. The same one. Whatever that initial value was, we're just adding it every time, right? So it's the same answer. We added the initial value. Okay, so fortunately we've actually, actually I, I do want to cover this one on the video because in some classes we're not getting to do this. So if we want now, if we know we want to add seven quarts of blueberries to the food salad in table one, how can we use the table, here's our question, to help us determine how many strawberries to add? In other words, I'm looking at table one. Do I have seven? No. Okay, so I'm going to add a stat out without extending my table. Can I use the information that's here to figure out how many strawberries I need for seven quarts of blueberries? He said yes. Davis, how would I do it? Okay. So I add two to the five, that gives me how many quarts of blueberries? Seven. So then what would I do on the strawberries? Because those are the related ones, right? So how many cups of straw quarts of strawberries would I need? Twenty one. I could have also used three and four and nine and twelve. So whatever the values are, I could have just added them up from this side. Whatever I add here, I add there. Make sense? Because so they are directly relational. These are ratio tables. That means everything is proportional. So we just add 2 plus 5, then add 6 plus 15 from strawberries. Does everybody understand that concept? Make sense? Yes. Yeah. No? Sure. Okay. So we're out of time, unfortunately. So I'm going to stop for there. Excuse me. Let's go back really quickly to page 36. Here is your first set of homework. A couple things I need to point out. I'm going to actually mark the instructions for you. Assume each of the following represents a table of equivalent ratios. Fill in the missing values, task one. Then choose one of the tables and create a real world context for the ratio shown. What does that mean? Jacob? For how many of them? One. One? Do I have to do it for all three? No. But if I don't do it for at least one, have I done all my homework? No. So will I get all my credit? No. Is there anyone confused on that? No. Gabriel? Yes. You sure? Okay. So yes. Take one of them and just make a story for it. So like for every 16 peanuts, there are 44 cashews. I don't care what it is. No, you choose the cashews because that's my story. Make up your own. But use your base value for the story. Whatever you end up with in your first one, that's what we want. I'll give you a hint. You might want to look back at your notes. I may have given you a hint or a few on something to fill in. On this one, again, create a ratio table for making lemonade with a lemon juice to water ratio of 1 to 3. Show how much lemon juice would be needed if I use 36 cups of water. 36, that's a big number, isn't it? Do I want to do a table that's going to go all the way from 3 to 36 using additive? I wouldn't. Your table could be two entries. 1, 3, 36, show me what the lemon is. Okay? 
You don't have to do a whole lot. If you want to do additive and do all the numbers in between, feel free. This is a good example of where a multiplicative table will serve you much better. How is the value of the ratio used to create the table? In other words, how did I build my table? Talk about it. Here, this is three parts, guys. You have three separate things to do. If you come back and you just have circled one of those letters and there's no word, how much credit are you getting? I hope we're starting to see the pattern because I have an awful lot of zeros on my side. Okay? Guys, show your work. Do each of these. What ratio was used? In other words, I'll give you a hint. Is that in simplest form? No. Okay? If I go to simplest form, that will tell me the ratio that was used. Just support your answer. Show me how you got there. How are the values in each row related to each other? In other words, if I go from here to here, what am I doing? Rows are these ways. So I'm talking about how did I go like this? How are the values in each column related to each other? In other words, as I'm going down, what's my pattern? What am I doing? Any questions on your homework? Okay. Um, we're going to do a surprise. That quiz you guys just took, you're going to grade next class period. Because we want you to understand how we grade your quizzes. We're still going to grade them, and we're going to check your grading to make sure you do it right. But you're going to get a chance to see exactly how well you did. Okay? Any questions on anything we've covered today? Okay.